Your Highness, eminent guests, friends, and well-wishers, coinciding with Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, we gather together virtually for the second Cervical Cancer Forum under the patronage of Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar bin Mohammed al Qasmi, wife of the ruler of Sharjah, founder and royal patron of Friends of Cancer Patients, international ambassador of the World Cancer Declaration for the Union for International Cancer Control, and international ambassador for childhood cancer for UICC. Sheikh Jawahar continues on her mission to go the extra mile to reduce the suffering of people with cancer and the burden of this disease on society. The forum organized by Friends of Cancer Patients in partnership with the United Nations Population Fund brings together decision makers and stakeholders to showcase progress on human papillomavirus and cervical cancer prevention and make the case for increased regional and global collaboration to save lives. This will be done through panel discussions with academics, community leaders, scientists, policy leaders, and communications experts. It will also review the success of the Sharjah Declaration on Cervical Cancer three times three, released at the inaugural edition of this forum back in 2019. We are grateful for the support of local, regional, and international health authorities and centers of medical knowledge, such as the UAE Ministry of Health and Prevention, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the Union for International Cancer Control, the Eastern Mediterranean NCD Alliance, the Federation of Gulf Cancer Control, and the World Health Organization. I extend a heartfelt welcome to each of you present here today and thank you for joining us in exploring ways to foster collaborations, which will address regional and national responses to HPV and cervical cancer in the Arab region more effectively. It is now my pleasure to present a video from the patron of the forum, Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar al Qasimi's address to the forum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدني أن أكون معكم اليوم لنشهد معا انطلاق منتدى مكافحة الورم الحليمي البشري وسرطان عنق الرحم في دورته الثانية والذي به نستكمل مساعي جمعية أصدقاء مرضى السرطان في تسليط الضوء على واحد من أكثر أنواع السرطان شيوعا وفتكا عند النساء في العالم إن العدد المهول من ضحايا سرطان عنق الرحم يؤكد مدى شراسة هذا المرض ويحتم علينا الوقوف معا لنستمر بمكافحته سواء بالحملات والمبادرات وكل ما يرفع مستوى الوعي عند الأفراد بأهمية الوقاية منه فهذا المرض يتسبب كل سنة بوفاة أكثر من 7500 سيدة في منطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال أفريقيا بينهن بنت رسمت لمستقبلها أحلاما جميلة وأخت غمرت أفراد أسرتها بالاهتمام والرعاية وأم صنعت أسرة استقامت بحكمتها وكبرت تحت حمايتها لذا يتوجب علينا جميعا كأفراد أو مؤسسات أو مجتمعات أن نساهم في مكافحة هذا المرض لتكتمل حكاية كل الفتيات والنساء حول العالم وليعشن حياة كاملة تملأها الصحة والسلامة وبلا شك أن الوضع الصحي واجه تحد كبير خلال العام الماضي بانتشار فيروس كوفيد-19 وكما ضاعف ذلك خطورة المرض وشراسته على المصابات تضاعفت بالمقابل الجهود الدولية في تكثيف حملات التوعية بضرورة الوقاية من المرض وأن نكون على استعداد تام لمقاومة مرض السرطان بشتى أشكاله استمرت جمعية أصدقاء مرض السرطان كما عهدناها منذ سنوات طويلة أن تضع نصب عينيها حشد الجهود على المستويين المحلي والعالمي للتعاون بين كافة الأطراف في سبيل تطوير برامج مستدامة هدفها القضاء على مرض السرطان وكما كان نتاج الدورة الأولى من هذا المنتدى إطلاق وثيقة الشارقة حول فيروس الورم الحليمي وسرطان عنق الرحم نأمل أن يثمر هذا المنتدى في سنته الثانية عن مخرجات تجعل الوصول إلى الفحوصات الدورية واللقاحات والعلاجات أسرع وأسهل لكافة فئات المجتمعات 
على النطاق الإقليمي واعتماد سياسات منظمة واستراتيجيات تتناسب مع التحديات التي تواجه أفراد المجتمع والقطاع الطبي أيضا وبذلك ننقذ حياة الكثير من النساء وإيقاف المعاناة النفسية لعائلاتهن التي يتسبب بها المرض ختاما أتقدم بالشكر الجزيل إلى جميع الأفراد في جمعية أصدقاء مرضى السرطان الذين يبذلون جهودا مستمرة في إقامة فعاليات ومبادرات كهذا المنتدى سعيا إلى رفع الوعي المجتمعي لتعزيز الوقاية وزرع ثقافة الفحص الدوري ومد يد العون إلى المريضات وعائلاتهن في جميع مراحل العلاج ولا يفوتني أن أشكر المكتب الإقليمي لمنظمة الصحة العالمية للشرق المتوسط ووزارة الصحة ووقاية المجتمع والوكالة الدولية للطاقة الذرية والاتحاد الدولي لمكافحة السرطان وجميع الجهات الداعمة التي باتت جزءا لا يتجزأ من المبادرات التوعوية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you, Your Highness, for your powerful speech. I would now like to invite Her Excellency Sousan Al-Fahoum Jafar, Chairperson of the Board of Directors of Friends of Cancer Patients, to deliver her welcome address. Distinguished guests, Your Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you all today to the Second Cervical Cancer Forum organized by Friends of Cancer Patients, FOCP, in partnership with the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, UNFPA. The two-day forum is aptly themed accelerating action on HPV and cervical cancer and has been designed with our determined objective that going forward, our concerted and united efforts will successfully reduce the unnecessary suffering caused by a preventable, non-communicable disease that impacts women globally. Despite the limitations imposed by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, we at FOCP and our partners know full well that we have no time to waste because even being one of the most treatable forms of cancer with early detection, cervical cancer still regrettably ranks fourth for both incidence and mortality among women worldwide. And this is the reason why I, indeed we all are, so grateful for the constant support and guidance of Her Highness Sheikha Jawahar with Muhammad Al Qasimi, wife of His Highness, the ruler of Sharjah, and founder and royal patron of FOCP, in steering global efforts towards supporting scientific research, raising awareness of the disease, and accelerating action on HPV and cervical cancer in particular. I am pleased to say that we are joined today at this virtual forum by some of the regions and indeed the world's leading experts and key drivers of health policy and prevention and vaccine implementation. Over the next two days, we will explore important themes on the subject and learn about advances made in cervical cancer awareness landscape in the region, we will also be showcasing the UAE's experience and efforts in driving the same through a comprehensive approach. In the UAE, cervical cancer awareness and screening started almost 11 years ago with the efforts of the Department of Health Abu Dhabi, recommending females aged 25 to 65 to undergo papillomavirus screening every three to five years. A big milestone in cervical cancer elimination in the UAE was also marked in September 2018 by the Ministry of Health's announcement of a countrywide rollout of the vaccination for HPV1, HPV2 and HPV3 providing an extensive 84% coverage. 
November 2020, the WHO made an important announcement that outlined the three critical steps of the elimination of cervical cancer. Vaccination, screening and treatment. Successful implementation of these could reduce the new cases of the disease by over 40% and 5 million related deaths by 2050. Which brings us to today's second Cervical Cancer Forum with almost one year in planning and preparation. With such a distinguished and knowledgeable gathering over a host of disciplines, I have no doubt that the discussions over the next two days will bring us fresh insights on the way forward, incorporating global best practices in our healthcare policies as we assess where we currently stand with cervical cancer elimination and highlight the role of civil society and its advocacy efforts in furthering our noble goals of the, for the benefit of all. The evolving uh, technological advances and innovation of the ecosystem on cervical cancer elimination will continue to drive the UAE, Sharjah and FOCP to turn the spotlight on galvanizing practical and effective steps in the early detection, prevention and treatment agenda for cervical cancer in the UAE. Reflecting on the Sharjah Declaration on Cervical Cancer 3x3, an integrated three-pronged strategy unveiled at the conclusion of the first Cervical Cancer Forum in January 2019, will enable us to keep focus on as we ensure a continuum of care and better outcomes for women everywhere. I would like to thank all our eminent speakers and participants at this virtual forum for taking forward the conversation on the cervical cancer burden and driving efforts to overcome barriers for its prevention and treatment. In conclusion, and needless to say, what unites us all is our relentless drive to save lives. Together, let's make it happen. Thank you and my best wishes for a fruitful forum. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your insightful talk and the efforts of Friends of Cancer Patients in accelerating action on HPV and cervical cancer. I now call upon Ms. Diane Keita, Deputy Executive Director of Programs at the United Nations Population Fund to address the forum. Your Highness, Sheikha Dahawer bint Mohammed Al Qasimi of United Arab Emirates, Your Royal Highness Princess Dina Mired, immediate past president of the Union for International Cancer Control, Mr. Rafael Mariano Grossi, Director General International Atomic Energy Agency. I am honored to deliver these opening remarks and I thank you for your generous support and collaboration. I would like to thank Her Excellency Sawasan Al Fahum Jafar, Chairperson and President of the Board of Directors, Friend of Cancer Patient, United Arab Emirates. Without her dedication and commitment, UNFP and Friend of Cancer Patient would not have partnered and this forum would not have been the same. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Assalam. Thank you for joining us today. This forum is an excellent opportunity to remind ourselves that 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development aims to achieve a life of dignity for all people and call for reducing by one third premature death from non-communicable diseases. Cancer affects all countries, but those with fewer resources are hit hardest. Nothing illustrates this better than the burden of cervical cancer. The world's poorest countries are home to more than 8 in 10 women newly diagnosed with cervical cancer. In the Arab region, nearly 10,000 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer each year, and last year 6,000 women passed away because of this disease. Today, we have the knowledge, experience, and tools to protect every woman everywhere. 
Comprehensive cervical cancer prevention includes vaccine to protect girls against future infection with the human papilloma virus, screening measures and preventing treatment of precancers. While applauding the success of cervical cancer screening in many high-income countries, we have a responsibility to replicate this progress in all settings in all countries. For example, in the Arab region, only United, the United Arab Emirates and Libya have included the HPV vaccine in their national immunization program. National organized cervical cancer screening programs are suboptimal in most of the Arab states. UNFPA and WHO recently launched the first ever global strategy to eliminate cervical cancer. The strategy outlined three key steps, vaccination, screening, and treatment. Successful implementation of all three key steps could reduce more than 40% of new cases of the disease and 5 million related deaths by 2050. UNFP will take the lead on the executing of the strategy and is ready to support documenting good practices to inform regional and national policies on prevention, early detection, and treatment of cervical cancer in the Arab region. I am grateful that this conference is taking place at such opportune time as January is the Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Where a person lives should not determine if they develop a cancer or die from it. We must work together to eliminate cervical cancer as a public health issue and to reduce the burden that millions face from all cancers. I am very impressed with the number and quality of experts and stakeholders mobilized for this event, which translates the commitment at all levels. Ladies and gentlemen, without your determination, commitment and hard work, we will not be able to achieve the global strategy to eliminate cervical cancer, nor the SDG at large. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Keita, for your inspiring speech. And I would like to resonate your message that we already have the knowledge, experience, and tools available to protect every woman everywhere. Let's strive to make sure that all women can access it too. As we gather here today virtually united, we are delighted to have different UN representatives deliver their welcome speech. Dr. Karina Nersessian, Deputy Regional Director of the UN Population Fund, Arab States Regional Office, will now deliver her welcome speech, followed by Dr. Dina Asaf, UN Resident Coordinator for the United Arab Emirates. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the guests, and I'm honored to welcome you all on behalf of the UNFPA Regional Director for the Arab Region, Dr. Luai Shabani. In particular, I would like to welcome and share my heartfelt gratitude for the engagement and endorsement of this very important topic by Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar bin Mohammed Al Qasmi, um, Her Excellency Sultan Al Fahum Jafar, Chairperson and the President of the Board of Directors, Friends of Cancer Patients, UNFPA DD for programs, Ms. Diane Keita, Ms. Rafael Mariano Grossi, Director General of uh, International Atomic Energy Agency and the immediate past president of the Union for International Cancer Control, and Dr. Dina Asaf, the resident coordinator of the UN in the United Arab Emirates. Dear ladies and gentlemen, a very well, warm welcome once again to the Cervical Cancer Forum. I'd like to start with a little story and introduce you to Nadia. She is a 40-year-old woman who grew up in Morocco in the 70s. Nadia is living in Tangier and she's married with two beautiful children. She loves long walks on the sea and the feel of the salty wind in her hair. That's what makes her happy. Recently, Nadia started having severe back pain and some warning signs, which made her consult her gynecologist. 
taking a pap smear unfortunately came positive and Nadia was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Because of the early prevention, she was able to start her chemotherapy and that made a difference in her life. Of course, this is a fictional story, but just like Nadia, 9,700 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer each year in the Arab region. And last year, nearly 6,000 women passed away because of this disease. Um, innovations such as the HPV vaccines and new screening technologies have dramatically increased our ability to save lives, even in the most remote corners of this world. Over the past decade, the common efforts have validated the feasibility, cost effectiveness, and the impact of the cervical cancer prevention in low and lower middle income countries. We know that cervical cancer, uh, cancer prevention programs can save women's lives and can be successfully integrated into existing health services for girls and women. This is viable and affordable in all countries. Unfortunately, comprehensive prevention and screening programs are still lacking in some Arab countries. Cervical ca cancer prevention programs represent a best buy in global health and contribute to achieving the global development targets for the health of women and girls and the reduction of non-communicable disease. UNFP is actively supporting prevention efforts through its partnership with the Gavi Alliance, who in turn is supporting the low-income countries to have access to sustainable supply of HPV vaccine as low as US dollar 4.5 per dose. Women living with HIV are particularly vulnerable to the disease they're six times more likely to get cervical cancer compared to women without HIV. COVID-19 has made continuation of HPV and cervical cancer program even more difficult. However, it also offers a unique opportunity to observe the prompt rollout of vaccination in the Arab states in the near future. And we look forward to draw lessons from this vaccination rollout that can be applied when rolling out the HPV vaccinations as well. You may ask, what is UNFPA doing uh, to support the world in conquering this important um, disease? And UNFPA actively contributes to SDGs, in particular SDG 3 and 5. More specifically, target 3.4 of the SDGs is exclusively dedicated to reduce premature mortality from non-communicable diseases, including cervical cancer, by one-third by 2030. In addition to the SDG and the global strategy to accelerate the elimination of cervical cancer, we built on 2019 UNFPA FOCP charge de declaration the outcome of the first cervical forum aiming to make the Arab region the first in the world to eliminate cervical cancer through improving access to education, screening, vaccines, and treatment for HPV and cervical cancer. To conclude, I'd just like to know that this is another important step to accelerate actions and ultimately eliminate cervical cancer. Um, that this forum offers. Here are the global stakeholders that gather to discuss the sustainable and equitable cervical cancer and HPV elimination programs. I would like to encourage you all to not only discuss this important issue and learn from each other, but develop clear recommendations and action points that can be advocated with your respective national governments to include cervical cancer in prevention, treatment, palliative care programs. With that, I wish you all very informative conference and looking forward to reading the recommendations. Thank you again. Your Highness Sheikha Jawahir bint Muhammad Al Qasimi, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Is it, a, it is a pleasure to join you today for the opening of what will certainly be 
two days of fruitful exchange and reflection. I would like to commend my colleagues at the United Nations Population Fund, Regional Office for Arab States, and the Friends of Cancer Patients Organization for their dedication in mobilizing this varied group of stakeholders from academia to community leaders, scientists, and policymakers, amongst others. In the pursuit of a strengthened collaboration around a topic that affects so many women each year. These past months, as the world navigated the pandemic, health has been top of, of mind for all of us. However, the focus on overcoming the pandemic has also, has also had the potential of relegating other health priorities. It is therefore heartening to see not only that the actions from the Sharjah Declaration on Cervical Cancer from 2019 are being pursued, but also that the partnership between the United Nations Population Fund and the Friends of Cancer Patients was renewed through the Memorandum of Understanding signed last November. Ensuring healthy lives and promoting well being for all at all ages is clearly set out in the 2030 development agenda as sustainable development goal number three. I mentioned this because it is the first time any development agenda has recognized that non communicable diseases like cancer pose a significant health and development challenge, which therefore impacts other sustainable development efforts. Countries now have several SDG indicators and targets on non-communicable diseases and CDs that if met will positively impact the well-being of their populations. I'm confident the panel discussions today and tomorrow will yield valuable insights into how we can continue raising awareness around this topic and how policy development and innovations can accelerate regional progress towards the prevention and control of cervical cancer to hopefully eradicate it for future generations. To combat, to combat any challenge, one, one first must have knowledge and knowledge is power. I therefore thank you for your knowledge exchange in support of the Arab region. I wish you fr fruitful discussions and successful deliberations over these next two days, which will also open opportunities for future dialogue and collaborations, which are vital to the success of the Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you very much and uh, good luck for today. Thank you. Well, first I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Narcessian for bringing the message so close to home with Nadia's story and highlighting that cervical cancer prevention programs such as vaccines and screening represent best buy interventions. Thank you also very much, Dr. Dina, for emphasizing that non-communicable diseases like cancers pose a significant health and development challenge, which therefore impacts other sustainable development efforts. Now, Princess Dina Mirad, member of the WHO Expert Group for the Elimination of Cervical Cancer and immediate past president of the United of the Union for International Cancer Control, will now deliver her keynote address. Your Highness Sheikha Jawahar bint Mohammed Al Qasim, wife of the ruler of Sharjah, Your Excellencies, fellow speakers. 17 November 2020 was a big day. It was the formal launch of the WHO Global Cervical Cancer Elimination Strategy that countries signed up to, setting a bold target that by the year 2030 to have all countries achieving 90% HPV vaccination coverage, 70% screening coverage, and 90% access to treatment for cervical pre-cancer and cancer, including access to palliative care. It was the day that countries told cervical cancer loud and clear that your days are numbered. This is heartening news indeed. But having said that, we all know that this strategy will not magically implement itself. The strategy will deliver hope to the 570,000 women afflicted with cervical cancer annually if and only if countries and global partners actually start to implement it line by line. If governments hope to succeed in rolling out the strategy for the elimination plan, they have to realize that they have to fix the flawed, inefficient fundamentals that currently belie our health systems first. Reversing the building of vertical systems that treat, 
diseases rather than patients. Vertical health systems that invest time, money, resources to reach out to HIV women, for example, and treat them, and yet miss that great opportunity of interaction with those same women to be early detected for breast and cervical cancer, for example, or to vaccinate them. Noting again here that HIV women are twice as likely to contract cervical cancer than any other group. This is what vertical systems do. They not only squander lives, but also efforts and scarce resources. It cannot be so difficult to think of integrating vaccination program of cervical cancer as part and parcel of general vaccination program. It really is not rocket science to do so, or to integrate reproductive health services with HIV and cervical cancer services, whilst making sure that adolescent prevention and screening services tackle all. It is doable, my friends. What's more, the responsibility for a successful rollout of the cervical cancer strategy is not dependent on countries alone. The responsibility also lies with relevant global partnerships, such as by Gavi, World Bank, UN organizations such as WHO, UNFPA, and others. Global stakeholders have to sort out prior the known barriers, such as by establishing and including strategic fundi funding and supply agreements to guarantee affordable prices and reliable vaccine supply that is not dependent on unreliant local NGO funding. Actually, many countries who had the political will and great intentions and prepared the ground for vaccinating their girls only to have their efforts halted due to global vaccine supply issues or when donor money ran out, thus negating the whole effort completely. Furthermore, countries need to be reminded that dealing with cervical cancer is not just a technical challenge, it is also a cultural challenge. Therefore, it is imperative that countries harness the power of national civil society organizations who have the connectivity and trust of community and start and stand ready to partner with you to make cervical cancer elimination a reality in your country. Those countries who fail to prepare the ground with intensive awareness for a successful uptake of vaccinations fail to deliver their goals. I am therefore proud that UAE were of the first countries in the MENA region to start tackling cervical cancer. In 2008, the Abu Dhabi Health Authority introduced free HPV vaccination and then in 2018 announced a countrywide rollout for the vaccination. I am told that the uptake for the vaccine exceeds 80%. But what is interesting here is that UAE made this investment, despite the fact that cervical cancer incidence in UAE is quite low. They took the logical decision to nip cervical cancer in the butt and be ahead of the curve. They ticked it off the box. This is precisely the kind of thinking that we need in global health. I am also very pleased and proud that this joint forum by Friends of Cancer Patients Society, chaired by my dear friend, Her Royal Highness Sheikha Jawahir, and UNFPA are of the first group in the Embro region to hold the forum on cervical cancer in 2021. By so doing, sending a clear message of hope to the hundreds of thousands of women presenting with new cases of cervical cancer each year in the Embro region, that you will continue to advocate on their behalf. Cervical cancer elimination push represents a great opportunity. It could very well be the engine that will help test and deliver the changes in our health systems that have long evaded us. Cervical cancer elimination is possible if we all coalesce into one united force with one action plan and one voice with the drive towards a vision of a world without cervical cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Princess Dina, for raising the important message to encourage the region to be ahead of the curve 
and prioritize efforts on eliminating cervical cancer. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Rafael Mariano Grossi, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Austria, to deliver his keynote speech. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to join you and would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to such an important gathering. At the very outset, please allow me to acknowledge Her Highness Sheikha Yawahea bint Mohammed al Kazimi and Her Royal Highness Princess Dina Mired for their unreserved support in the fight against cancer, and particularly cervical cancer, which we are here to discuss today. As we meet, COVID is causing an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Unfortunately, the pandemic puts cancer patients at even great risk of being left behind. We at the IAEA are determined to help, and we are proud of our contribution. For decades, we have assisted many of our member states in making significant progress and investments in the care of and other cancers. Despite the pandemic, we have continued our work in 2020. As we know, cervical cancer kills about 300,000 women worldwide each year. Nine out of 10 of these deaths occur in low and middle income countries because they lack the life saving technology and expertise so readily available elsewhere. The IAEA focuses on redressing this inequality. As part of our mandate, we provide nuclear medicine, radiology and radiotherapy resources. We mobilize and procure equipment, and we help countries control cancer through radiation medicine and the training of medical professionals. So that no one is harmed, the technology that is meant to prevent suffering, these professionals rely on us for guidance and quality assurance and on our laboratories for audits. They also use our international databases to share knowledge and look to us for support with clinical trials and research. We may be based in Vienna, but our work is truly international. We have more than 140 active technical cooperation projects in the field of cancer. In the Middle East, Jordan, Egypt, Tunisia, the United Arab Emirates and Qatar are among the countries we have served with key partners such as the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, we work to integrate these services into comprehensive cancer control plans. In the past decade alone, we have spent 174 million euros entrusted to us for this work by our member states. We are part of the UN Joint global program on cervical cancer prevention and control. Together with the UNFPA, we want to achieve a 30% reduction in cervical cancer deaths by 2030. The Women Cancers Partnership Initiative is another great example of the collaborative effort in the fight against our common enemy. We launched this with the Islamic Development Bank and others. Our goal is to increase the funds and expertise that will improve the diagnosis and treatment of breast and cervical cancer in the Middle East and beyond. In Africa, we are working together with WHO and UNH because HIV infected women are six times more likely than uninfected women to die from cervical cancer. As you can see, the IAEA plays a significant role in achieving the agreed commitments of the Sharia Declaration on Cervical Cancer and the third pillar of the WHO's global strategy to accelerate 
the elimination of cervical cancer. The WHO's goal is that 90% of women identified with this form of cancer to have access to quality treatment and care, including radiotherapy. We must answer these clear calls to action and work towards awareness, prevention and treatment. Even in the Middle East, the fatality rate of women diagnosed with cervical cancer was 60% last year. More than 9,000 women died. Many of them could have been saved. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I urge us to act now. Every woman, especially those most vulnerable, must have a fair chance against cervical cancer. In this new year of hope, let's work together to achieve this, our common goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grossi, for all of the efforts being taken by the IAEA towards cervical cancer and women empowerment. We will now watch a video that will bring us up to speed on the state of the cervical cancer situation on the global, regional and international level. Thank you. 